and I'll let you take it away. Okay, cool. Um, let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. Uh, it's July the 15th, it's 2019 still. Um, it's kind of summertime outside here anyway, so I'm happy. Um, cool, I created the doc because there was no doc and, uh, and I put some things in it. Uh, so I thought we might want to talk about them. Um, if you are here, please put your name on the attendees list. Can I get someone to take notes for today? Or volunteer to take notes at least? Thank you, Molly. Rad, okay. Um, cool, uh, so, no, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not sure entirely exactly how this works, but we've got a note taker. Uh, we've got everyone putting their names on. Um, and then, so I'm just gonna kind of go through the document and see what, um, see what happens. If you've got initiatives, like things that are kind of big overall tasks or projects that are happening, then, and you wanna kind of give an update about them and feel it's important, then put that, put that down in the doc. Uh, and if there are any blockers that you have in your weekly update, oh yeah, I should probably tell people about that. If you have a weekly update of what you've done, what you've blocked on and what you've got next, put it at the bottom of the, it's nearing the bottom of the um, document just so we have a record. We won't talk over of it, over it all, but if you have any blockers that you'd like to talk about, we'll talk about those after the initiatives. Uh, put them in the blockers section underneath uh, the initiatives section and we will be sure to chat through them and hopefully unblock you. Uh, so let's take ourselves through the initiatives. Uh, we've got one here, upgrade release process. Um, would someone like to kind of give an update on this? I'm sure, was it Stephen who put it up there? Yeah, this is the PR we just merged, actually. Uh, so this GoFest has a upgraded release process. Um, I'll just make that clear. Uh, yeah, that's the status. You can read the, the new release uh, doc. Huge thanks to I think, both Alex and David. Uh, this is wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, that's that. You can also read the, the current uh, run we're trying to run which is the uh, 0 0.4.22 RC1 release. And the objective is to um, also put out a blog post about our new release process, for which I have put a very, very high level stub, um, but we need to flesh it out with all of the decisions. Nice, thank you. Can, can we Actually, get a link to that in the doc? Before we move on, let's get a DRI for that as well. Uh, anyone want to volunteer? For the blog post? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, if, like, if someone has time to finish it up. It's just headers. So no. I imagine <laughs> it would be best if people actually take sections of it. Uh, Sorry. I, can, I muted you. Oh. Sorry, Susan. I can, I can DRI. Everyone else can hear me. <laughs> uh, cool. Take a pass and plus us in as, as we're needed. Cool. Okay. Uh, this is very good news that we're going to be upgrading our release process and, uh, and making it more well tested. Uh, doing more RCs, getting people to test it before it goes out, generally having more stable, reliable releases, and the possibility of following Semba as well, uh, to some extent. So that is all super good news, in my opinion. Uh, anyone have anything else to say about that before we move on, or shall we get on with it? All right, let's get on with it. Uh, upgrade testing process, go IPFS. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Stephen, I guess, again, is that you? Yes, uh, everyone should read that uh, linked document. Um, yeah, th this is the current plan. Uh, it's obviously up for debate and change um, for how to start, or basically the, the required steps to start releasing GoIPFS again. 
uh, and then after that, like the rest of the plan. Uh, this is, is again more focused around Go Express because that's really like the one people are relying on in a lot of production systems. Um, we can also port a lot of this actually to JS IPFS and like, run the same tests against it. Uh, the, basically, before we can cut a release, we want to get the first uh, four. Um, let's see, let me see this again. Uh, yeah, first four milestones done, uh, which unfortunately means probably two to three months of work. Um, so uh, this will also require buy-in from many different teams. Uh, you may notice that some people are here listed as DRIs, and I'd be surprised. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll hopefully be pulling help from uh, infra, from package managers, from the gateway team, from just about everywhere. Uh, that's all I have. There's really nothing to discuss in this meeting. Just read this doc and we can discuss it later. Is there a place where the conversation is going to happen going forward about this doc? It is accessible and commentable by everyone, but not a great place to have a long threaded discussion about priority in the comment section on a spreadsheet. It's kind of rough. So we have the testing improvement plan issue in GoFS. We could have a discussion there. I can link to this and also like update everything there. The, the, that version has all the things we need to do, just not right. Uh, so are we making this document public or not? I have. Okay. Because you linked it in the notes. Oh, okay, fine. Very cool. All right. Uh, that's cool. So, the, so you said it will be a number of months potentially before uh, the, the testing process is ready, which, so what is the upshot of that? Does that mean that there's going to be no kind of major releases of Go IPFS until then, or and we just release uh, patch releases like you know bug fixes? Yep, that, that's basically the plan. Uh, it, it, we, we don't feel uh, sure that we won't introduce progressions. This is also partially the fact that like, we've been saying we want to do this for ages and we haven't been doing it. This is a way to force us to actually make progress and this actually like upgrade our engineering process. Uh, at the moment, we're kind of you know, retreating Go IPFS as kind of like an application where, yes, we'll test things, but we won't like really test it like you would test like a, I don't know, like a distributed storage system uh, where like you basically you hammer on it and like see how it actually works in, in practice. Um, so effectively, yeah, we need to say we need a little help for testing from like app testing to like, like hardcore system testing. Cool. Uh, and then better releases and fewer bugs, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, also better understanding of like where performance issues are. And yeah. the to get. at the moment, it's kind of like, you have to do a lot of manual testing and we can, again, this is less about bugs, more about like performance regressions at scale. So like we have bugs, but those are actually pretty far and few between. Um, yeah. Got it. Cool, thank you. Um, all right, that is the upgrade testing process. Um, so this next section is something I put in a, for uh, JS IPFS, and there is at the moment a big kind of, well, it was really last quarter uh, that all of, most of this work has been done, um, and it's only this only now that uh, kind of we've been able to look into it and uh, and start fixing it up. Anyway, but so. Garbage collection doesn't exist in JS IPFS. And uh, one of the things that uh, we kind of need if we're gonna store any data uh, in JS IPFS is A, like some good pinning, and B, some ability to collect garbage when, uh, when, when we're, we're using our node and uh, we don't need the data anymore, because otherwise the repo is just gonna continue to grow. Um, so there is, uh, so I put, uh, um, a heart emoji and Dirk MC at the bottom of there because it is basically all of Dirk's uh, good work uh, that he's done on this, um, and he's done a really good job of looking into what uh, what Go IPFS does and to do something at least similar. Um, and uh, and so yeah, it's 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 coming along. I've been reviewing the pull requests; they are large. There's a lot of stuff that that it touches, um, but there it, like we are kind of reasonably close, I'd say, to having a kind of kind of first pass implementation of garbage collection working in a similar way that it does in Go IPFS, also working in JS IPFS. So um, that's cool. And uh, so like I put there, it's kind of 
uncovered a few problems with our existing pinning uh, things, like our internal blocks were being kind of provided to the DHT, so uh, we needed to fix that. We realized that Go IPFS uses an in-memory IPLD for those uh, for those nodes, I believe, um, so that they don't get um, put onto the DHT. Um, so yeah, we need to sort that out. Um, we found out a couple of kind of other problems with pin types not being filtered properly for pin LS. Um, and uh, we know that performance is not great when pinning in JSIPFS at the moment. So there is, I think Dirk's been also been looking into how we might um, fix up that. So um, next, next up for that is just to, uh, well, finish off the reviews for the PRs, uh, fix them up, um, change things, get them merged, uh, and, uh, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's, that will be done and dusted. Does anyone have any questions about that? I have one question, uh, very quick, because like, I, I don't remember this 100%, but I remember like uh, at some point in time we had problems with NetXDB auto garbage collection. Um, right, like so. When, when you start like peeling in an XDB database, like the browser itself will be the one trying to garbage collect. Just make sure, like, like it only keeps the objects that are most most used. Um, and I'm wondering if this work with GC like contemplates that and like uh, tests for different browsers because there's also problems in Firefox, Chrome, in which like they don't respect certain flags. Um, we we like try to get NetXDB to persist things. Um, are we testing for those things, or or this is just like first version, first iteration, yet? About the browser better. And so you broke up for just a, at the end there. I I didn't. Are you saying that the the browser will just garbage collect your stuff you put in in the in XDB? I, uh, I, I was hoping like someone had like a better memory of this. I remember like hitting these problems in the past. Um, I, I can like just search for more information, but like if, if, as far as I can remember, depending on how you set up in XDB, it will like auto like garbage collect uh, once it reaches a certain size. If I remember this correctly, but like I'll just do my own work and like find the links. Uh, and then share it with you. <laughs> I, I was not aware of that. That is good prior knowledge. Um, yeah, if you have any insight into it, then oh, please. Well, I was already sharing here on the chat. So. Right, okay. Uh, um, I am not aware, unless Dirk is, that we have taken that sort of thing into account. No, we, uh, this is really, really just a first pass implementation, but I think garbage collection is a pretty big topic and as David's kind of alluding to, we'll need to do some pretty serious testing on different browsers and stuff to make sure it's actually working. There was also a slight discussion in the chat about um, putting putting things on the DHT and whether or not that's intentional. So like JS versus Go IPFS behavior here. Someone want to summarize that for the notes? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Put them on the DHT when we're published. I don't know um, about that. Uh, Stephen, can you clarify your point? Uh, my point there was that for providing, or sorry, for reproviding, we just walk the data store. I don't think we even look at or exclude anything that's in the, the um, pin set. I mean, we should, but I don't think we do. Uh, for initial provides, again, I don't. I'm not sure what we do there. Uh, I don't know if we take an explicit, uh, if we do anything explicitly to avoid providing them. I think we might, um, but it would be kind of a hack anyways. It's not very reliable. Wait, Steve, Steven, this is Hannah. Uh, don't, yep. uh, what is the question about how we do, how we initially provide? Because we provide everything currently still through BitSwap. Yeah, so, okay, so uh, the pin set is actually stored as a DAG, an IPLD DAG inside the data store. Uh, the question is like, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we like create a separate like, uh, block service stack when we initially write these to the data store. Uh, I know we definitely provide them because we don't have any distinction there, but when we initially write them, we may create a separate stack. I don't know. 
Um, I mean, I can check that quickly. Okay, if you could clarify that anyway, that would be great. Um, uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, that is garbage collection, uh, and it's coming to a JS IPFS node near to you. Um, uh, and then, so the second thing I uh, I wanted to talk about also, I put this down to delegated routing. Um, I know this is uh, this is something that's kind of super important to JS IPFS working in the browser. Um, the idea is. Uh, if you can't find peers and retrieve your content, how about you ask someone who can? Uh, and that's that's basically delegated <laughs> delegated routing. Uh, and what happens is that uh, you have a node, an IPFS node on the internet, and we open up some HTTP API endpoints that you can call, like find probs and refs and uh, swarm connect. And you can essentially ask that node to uh, to to find peers and uh, and fetch content for you uh, so that you don't have to do it yourself. And in the browser, that's sometimes necessary because we have problems such as like same origin policy. Uh, we don't have a DHT. Even if we did, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to connect to half the people on the DHT because of same origin policy. Um, and uh, people with WebSockets, uh, that's, that's fine, but a lot of them are on just HTTP and uh, connecting to them from HTTPS is impossible. Um, so yeah, we have challenges in the browser with JS IPFS and delegated routing is one of those one of those things that can um, that can really kind of help that connectivity magic feeling at least, uh, e um, even if um, it isn't actually a fully kind of peer to peer thing. Uh, one of the things that is blocking this from um, from being realized and being released in JS IPFS is the fact that um, we need a, a, a way of configuring uh, the a Go IPFS daemon uh, gateway port. So what we've done at the moment is we have some public uh, nodes where we've configured Nginx to, um, to do this, but actually we need the configuration to be in Go IPFS if we are going to allow other people to set up their own delegated nodes um, with um, easily. Um, so just just to say that is what it is. Uh, there are two modules that I've been working on this week. They've been around for a while. Uh, I had to sort out the dependencies. They were depending on uh, a really old version of uh, IPFS HTTP client, uh, the old one called HTTP uh, IPFS API which meant that we had an extra 200K of bundle size uh, put being pulled into our bundle. So uh, I fixed them up uh, so that that's no longer the case. So they are ready to go. Uh, we just need this, uh, this uh, thing in Go IPFS to be implemented or, or well, fixed up, um, not implemented, um, for it to be kind of fully realized. Uh, and that's delegated routing. Any questions about that quickly? Do we know of anyone who's who's blocked on this, either from like the package manager side or the browser side? Just curious if we need to be unblocking someone if it's urgent. Delegated routing or garbage collection? Delegated routing. Though delegated. curious about either. Uh, I'm really interested in delegated routing because uh, it unlocks uh, uh, embedded JS IPFS in Brave uh, to be useful before we implement actual peer-to-peer -peer transport. Uh, right now, unless you are connected to a node that already has a content, the embedded node is not that useful. You are not able to use it for anything practical. That's why it's not like the default in the Brave. So I played with it. I have opinions and even feel some issues. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, specifically, I guess um, there are only a few options for finding and connecting, connecting to nodes, finding peers, and um, and getting content uh, for JS IPFS uh, in the browser. And this is adding another one that would be really, uh, really reliable to the mix. Um, so it would be good to get, get to get that. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, I think Yusuf just raised a hand. Oh, sorry. Delegated routing, like 
does, if you only delegated the routing portion and you still, like you found this peer, how do you connect to them if your connectivity is still limited? Or is this like then you would just broadcast a pub sub message to them or something? Or So uh, you would also open the Swarm Connect API. So you'd get the other node to connect to them. Okay. So you'll, you this are. is just to find more peers that you are able to connect to. Because right now the routing system, you have to be participating fully. Is that the how it gets to? It's to find content. So the problem is like currently finding content that you requires making many, many, many connections. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, you ask someone else to make all those connections and they tell you to connect to. And then okay. you connect directly to the person's content. Okay, cool. This could also partially be fixed by correctly implementing the DHT or getting a lot of the like DHT nodes offline if they're not like, mm -hmm. reachable. Because yeah, currently, we make hundreds of connections. A DHT request should, at like the very worst case scenario, make 20 connections, usually like five connections. Okay. That's okay. That's interesting context. Thanks. Stephen, am I correct that on the scale of things, this is a relatively low hanging fruit? Like the amount of work required is not huge? Yes. I mean, uh, I realize we have like a million things, but, but just no, the it's, quantity of work. The, yeah. the PR was mostly done, I seem to remember it stalled on random security questions. And then it kind of became like, hey, we don't really care about this for some reason. I, I can't remember yeah. why we made that decision. Um, Obviously, that's it's being revisited now. Uh, I'd have to go back sure. through and like dredge up old memories. I can't remember why. Yeah, I only bring that up because I wonder if this is a good. If we could, this is the type of issue that if we could truly spin up, you know, like JSI PFS people on some basics of the Go code base that they like might be able to do on their own. Um, I, you know, or it just seems like that type of issue. Uh, yeah, you know, as opposed totally. to like yeah. No, but especially because like I think most of the implementations are there. The options are in the config. It's literally just that like it hasn't been plumbed through for some reason. I, I again, I can't remember why. Sure. Yeah. 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 So I guess Lytle or or Alan or anyone else who would be excited about pushing this forward a little bit. Um, maybe Stephen will donate a little bit of ramp up time to helping pass context, and then this is something you can move forward on. Um, without being blocked on someone on the IPFS team. Lytle? Uh, just like a quick clarification about what's actually blocked. Uh, our preload nodes are set up uh, so that actually we are able to use them without uh, making those changes to go IPFS. So it's like not a hard block. The problem is that people who would be interested in running uh, delegated routing, uh, they would have to use our infrastructure. So that's what's blocked. Yeah, I, I think I, I, it seems, yeah, and the advantage is that if, if, if they weren't relying on our gateways, they could be setting up their own IPFS nodes, which would be potentially much easier for them and good for us <laughs> in a way. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree that we should not like make a blog post about this feature or should not publish uh, docs on that feature unless we are able, to, we, we have infrastructure and code in place so people can run their own preload nodes. Uh, that's basically that blocker. I'd be excited about pushing it over the line. I can help. I'll push the go things in the right way if I can. <laughs> I, I already there's like a separate uh, topic of performance in web browser because this is this feature is designed to be run in web browser and the way it's the preload uh, modules are implemented they just shotgun the re requests and if you have a lot of providers it's just a lot of requests and web browser is limiting the number of the connection you can do to a single host name to like six connections uh, which is pretty bad and you get like slow down everything to the crowd. So I, I'll be addressing that. So I think I feel the issue and probably will fix that in the deal. I'm actually less sure now that this is easy to fix just because, uh, well, this was the, I'll link to it in chat. This was the resolution. So we'll say, but it'd be great for someone to pick up on this and maybe talk to Lars and see what his reasoning here was. Um, but yeah, it got dropped because it was, complex. I can have a look. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, 
Where is my window gone? Okay, so next up, um, how long do we have for this? Is it a whole hour? Yes. Yeah, okay. Whew. I was worrying we had only two minutes left. Gossip Sub, uh, who added this one? This is also a JavaScript. <laughs> Double one eighty. Cool. So, so as me, so uh, basically last week I finished most of the remaining work in integrating Gossip Sub in gsli p including also interoperability tests with Go. Uh, so with that, last Friday, the Shane Safe guys released a new version, including the, also the fallback for FloodSub. So Jacob is on holiday this week, but uh, next week I hope that uh, we will release a uh, release candidate for Jesslip P2P, including uh, GossipSub. And uh, meanwhile, I also will start working on getting JSIPFS ready for this new release as the configuration for choosing what PubSub uh, implementation you want to use will change in uh, GSL P2P. So yes, I hope we have uh, gossip sub in the near future in GSIPFS as well. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, what's, um, can I ask a question to the Go people? What is the status of gossip sub in Go IPFS? Is it the default or experimental? As, as far as it, well, <clears throat> I think it's negotiated. Like it's enabled by default. Uh, I think. One second, let me check something. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not sure actually. Preferred, isn't it? It's technically experimental. But it's, it's a default from the experimentals, right? One sec, double check something. Uh, yeah, because PubSub is still experimental. Um, it may be the default once you enable PubSub. Yeah, at least in uh, Goalie P2P, here is the default. So I believe it's the default as well in IPFS. Uh, no, no, it looks like, no, it looks like if you enable PubSub, it's by default flood sub. Yeah. But we can switch that. They are interoperable though, right? But the both of the implementations because it's just Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's it's the default basically. We're like if I if I pick flood sub and you pick gossip sub, we both speak flood sub. That's basically how it works. Nice, okay. Um all right. Well if we can get that into JS I'd be best and we can maybe switch the default and that would be cool. Yeah, we should be able to switch the default even before then because it, it is backwards compatible. Um, I think yeah. this is part of the stability thing. Cool. Yeah. And it, it, being experimental, I think it makes sense to just shift to gossip. So, uh, yeah, given that the entire thing is experimental, yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right. Was uh, did you have anything else to say, Vashko, on the on that, or shall we move on? Move on. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, hey, I have one question though. Um, yeah, I'm curious yeah. about the tree farming on gossip sub in JSLine, even if the VHD is not like fully enabled yet. Like so, like gossip sub in Go, as far as I understand the protocol, like it does rely on peer discovery and peer routing to mm -hmm. like know how to propagate the messages. Like if like does an uh, leap peer implementation without a VHD enabled by default or any other peer routing mechanism enabled by default. Uh, is it able to support gossip sub to its fullest or uh, or no? Like, uh, really it, is yeah. it is better able to support gossip sub than flood sub. So flood sub, it depends entirely on being connected to peers that are part of the network. Gossip yeah. sub is always connected to one. You, I believe, then do peer exchange. Uh, I think you do peer exchange. Yeah, oh, so you do peer yeah. exchange right in the gossip sub protocol. I think so. I'm not entirely sure. Yes, the part of that for me. 
They exchange okay. uh, gossip oh, messages prop propagating uh, metadata to the other peers. But does that tell the other, like, do I tell about my other gossip sub peers? No, so. but uh, you tell your, the gossip sub peer that you know, and uh, it propagates the message to the other ones that you know. Okay, but sorry, if I could, like, do I tell you about my gossip sub peers? I don't think so. Okay, so there's no peer exchange. No. Okay, I have to double check. Okay, I'm not sure as well, but I think don't no. Yeah, the the issue is if there is no peer exchange happening, then it's hard to like form uh, a spanning tree uh, because you you just don't know to send the things or like uh, like you need to find peers. Um, but yeah, like what, let's do as homework. Uh, like read this back <laughs> and ask the question there. Okay, cool. Any other questions on gossip sub before we move on? All right, let's move on. What's up next is subdomain gateway base thirty two origin isolation, making it easier for base thirty two encoded CIDV one to be used in DNS as a subdomain label. I'm going to guess this is Lidl. Yeah, uh, it's something we talked before today um, with, with Stephen, but I feel it's something uh, worth mentioning uh, that's happening. Uh, Subdomain gateway it turns out to be an interesting inflection point between uh, our CADV1 base32 initiative uh, and also uh, all, it's a vessel to solving origin isolation for both public gateways and also local host gateway. So there are multiple problems that uh, it theoretically uh, solves, but it could, depending on what we will implement in which order, it will solve different things for different people. So I just wanted to highlight this and give you a brief overview where we are and what's happening here. So uh, subdomain gateway is basically content identifier in subdomain uh, instead of uh, location path. And it's actually shipped uh, in user land, uh, Cloudflare, and also we have a dweb link public gateway which supports that. The problem is that the way it's supported right now, it's at the Nginx level. It's like re reverse proxy, which takes care of trans taking a CID from subdomain and converting that CID uh, to a request to regular old school gateway, which was path uh, addressed. Um, so the first thing that uh, subdomain gateway support, like native sub support for subdomain gateways would solve would be the need for having something in front of Go IPFS to have a subdom subdomain gateway. So we want to make it easier for people to uh, run their own public uh, subdomain gateways uh, that provide original isolation, uh, similar to Cloudflare's, without the need and the complexity of running a reverse proxy and setting that up. Uh, so that's one thing, and there's uh, like a related issue on that, and we identified uh, some open questions how, um, may, may, maybe that is in the next step. So the second step is if we have support for subdomain gateway, and we run Go IPFS on localhost, then we have those uh, something something that localhost fake domains for localhost uh, that could in theory provide a subdomain gateway for your localhost machine. And this is where it gets interesting because you get a parity between origin isolation on the public gateways and you also have origin isolation on the local gateway. Um, so the problem here is this uh, transition path where we have uh, people running a local gateway, uh, which is path addressed, and then we suddenly introduce a subdomain one. Uh, we have uh, some notes in the issue I linked uh, about how do, should we uh, figure it out uh, the redirects, because we don't want to support both on the same origin. That would break the isolation. Um, so that's like an uh, open effort we will be figured out uh, through this week. And uh, another thing, uh, when we have that, uh, we could also implement HTTP proxy on top of that. That would be like a much smaller change. And that would give us uh, 
better UX in a web browser that has like a companion or any other web browser that sets up Go IPFS as a HTTP proxy that would enable us to, to remove a, a custom port and make uh, host names look better. And uh, going back to the uh, Base32 initiative, uh, subdomains could support not only IPFS, but also IPNS. And we finally sort of figured out how to represent peer IDs in subdomains. And we've added multi-codec for lib 2 p keys. And uh, the remaining steps are uh, wiring up the CID support in, instead of multi-hash, because in multiple places, both in Go and in JS, I believe, we assume uh, peer ID to be multi-hash, uh, effectively CID v0, uh, QM something. And uh, we, we need to find all those places to wire it up. So the, the multi-hash from the CID is uh, uh, extracted and supported. I believe that's it, more or less, if Stephen has any thoughts on, uh, on that. Uh, I don't have any new thoughts on that. Covered everything. Can, cool. I, can I ask a question? Yep. Yep. Uh, so, um, I'm curious if, if there's anything that's been done into like what are the boundaries of IPFS as an HTTP server? Um, uh, and it's not to, to sort of like uh, poo poo putting this directly in IPFS, but at some point it's like, you know, like at what point are you now replicating Nginx, you know, in something that is like really the domain of something that is designed to be a web server, like a professional web server versus something that is you know a basic http support so basically here we just we want enough so that uh, we can integrate ipfs into web browsers and that's it uh, i don't think we have any intention of like working really hard on performance or anything like that in terms of like 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 a real, real HTTP server who also things like caching and like but there are a lot of really complex things we could do that we're just probably not going to do and right, we can solve right, it by right. sticking nginx out in front of it in this case it, it's more about like uh we're trying to make GoFS work with web browsers, and web browsers have a lot of built-in like constraints that make that hard to do. Uh, sure, same origin. So yeah, whatnot. yeah, yeah, same origin and whatnot. Um, so like, what we could do is say, "Hey, users, you have to install these two things," or we could say, "Whatever, you install this one thing, and it just kind of magically works." I think that's really the, the key part here is you just want to say, "Install this one application, and you're done." Um, I would like like part of this or part of the scenario I would like to have would be to like split. Go invest to two pieces of like go invest the library and then go invest the application. We can make it very clear that here's the core and then here is like the end user like application side of things. Um, but that's a more complicated procedure. That's part of like the whole core data factor as well. For sure. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Like, no, no, it's a very good question, and it's something that we run into all the time. Like more features, more features, more features. <laughs> but like, you get to basically ship one application to users. The second you say, "Please install two applications," they start looking at you like, "What? what what's going Got on?" It. Oh, so once you have the local, once you can do the same origin on local host, then you can ship like a almost like a single binary. I mean, not well, actually single binary. Yeah. Well, that's what we already do. We we actually we do literally ship a single binary. Um, yeah. Uh, but it. it yeah, basically, like, this is not for, like, so if it's on a server, yes, we could say, like, hey, like, uh, you install it with and then you install an Nginx request proxy, and this is actually how pretty much everyone runs the gateway. But when we're trying to shift end users, like, the use case here is an end user, we can't really have that. And uh, something to remember is that like the, the idea, the better way to think about the HTTP in IPFS is that we, IPFS provides HTTP interop layer out of the box, but it's not like we implement entire HTTP spec. The, for example, we support uh, range requests, but only for a single range. Uh, we sure. su we support like uh, HTTP caching uh, semantics. We put like uh, CIDs in e tags and other stuff. So the web browsers benefit from built-in HTTP caching uh, layer that's already like implemented everywhere. But we we only implement what makes sense in IPFS context. It's not like it's not one-to-one -one mapping. We just need to be very uh, careful about what we map and what we expose over HTTP. For sure.
Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hannah. I think that was a really good question, actually. Um, uh, any other questions before we move on to blockers? Alrighty then, we've got blockers and asks, a relatively small, um, a small ask to help out on the forums, uh, on the discuss forums, on discuss.ipfs.io, IPFS, IPFS, IPFS specs and IPFS notes, and on the IRC channels uh, at IPFS and IPFS-dev, please hang out or help out if you can with things on there. Um, is there yeah. any, whoever put that down, do you, I did. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, so like the the set of people who are doing this is actually fairly small and it's a lot of work and very like distracting, time consuming. So if we had more people jumping on this, it'd be really helpful. It also helps the community like see that, hey, yes, we're involved, we're interacting with them, that kind of stuff. Uh, like, uh, just, like the discuss forums could definitely use a lot more help. IRC in general, like we go, if you have more people at different time zones, uh, we would have better responsiveness and like, again, better community engagement. Uh, right now, like we have some great people in the community doing this, but they don't always have visibility like into uh, what we're currently working on. So more people who are like in the core implementations group that understand what we're working on, going out into the community, like telling people what's going on, be really helpful. Also, if we are working on it ourselves, then we have a good idea of what are the common questions that are coming up and where where pe where we don't have the documentation to fill that out and where to point people at and and we can so what i find often is that when i'm answering issues um, on js i and if if i have to write out the same thing twice then that's really annoying so i end up making a doc for that <laughs> uh and we're only going to find out about that by actually participating in these sorts of things so um, i guess this is also an ask we can make of the docs team of hey docs team uh, this is a great thing to do as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's great to figure out what docs to write. But cool. Okay. Um, is, are there any other blockers or asks that people want to voice? Can I ask you a question on the, the last one? Um, sure thing. With respect to questions in IIC, we're getting quite a few questions around like, you know, why is this gateway not working or whatever. I'm not sure always like how public our information is about where we're up to with firefighting or whatever. Is there somewhere I can find that out or? I've actually created a couple of issues in the GoPress repo at least, because uh, this is where everyone tends to go. Um, if you go to tag meta, that's usually how you find these. Uh, no, is meta? Uh, no, whatever. Uh, label meta. I'm going to try finding the issue. Content resolution and gateway performance. Uh, that tries to cover a bunch of these issues and tries to explain it somewhat. Um, why is my chat not showing up? Okay, well, the issue number is 6383 in GoIPFS. I can't get the Zoom chat to uh, help me out here. Oh, there it goes. The other yeah. thing that's in the pipeline is a uh, status page for uh, IPFS and P2P things. I know um, Ollie is working on that right now, which will eventually help people to have an overview of what's currently working, currently not working and why. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that, that will be cool when it's done. It should help. Yeah, the other thing here is obviously we just need to like, you know, fix the thing. Um, so we can stop answering questions on this because it'll actually work. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, it, it's one thing to kind of say like, you know, we know this stuff is broken, but probably people really want to know like, what are you doing to fix it? When's it going to be ready, right? Yeah, yeah. And the current answer to that is, like, at least from my perspective, is we are first working on the testing to, or like, we have some fixes that we're not sure about. So we're first going to make the testing, like, solid so we can actually tell what these fixes will do to the network without, like, destroying everything. Uh, then we're going to release a bunch of fixes, and the timeline on this is, unfortunately, probably two or three months uh, before we start deploying these fixes to the network. That makes sense. Do you, do you think that should be public information? I don't know, like if we want to make commitments to that, like probably it's not a decision for us to make necessarily. I, I wouldn't make commitments on the two to three months thing because we don't know. Um, yeah. I definitely actually don't do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but like we can give the roadmap of like, like now this, this uh, testing document is public. 
I don't know how widely we want to link to that, but like people are asking me, say, look, like we are currently building out massive testing infrastructure uh, to try to better understand the network and better understand the changes we make. And that is the current thing. Yeah, I guess maybe it's more like a comms issue, like, because uh, we might um, save a lot of frustration and, you know, Reddit posts and stuff if we can, we can communicate that effectively. Yeah, so one broad post we are, of course, writing right now is the release process. Another great blog post, I think, would be this whole, like, testing thing. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not a really a commas person. <laughs> um, I don't know. What I would say there is, let, let's get through release with all this flow and all the testing, and I feel very confident, and I feel that it's very smooth, and I get the support from the partners and so on. And they both saying that, like, Everything, like everything we have created, and and I'm kind of like pointing to that really as an example. Um, kind of like doing the blog post first might might like might then point to something that's then we'll have more updates. So, so the, I think so. There are two issues here. It's like there's the release process and the current release, which will fix some burning fires, but it will not fix any of the gateway issues. It won't even touch them. Uh, the gateway issues are long-standing other issues that won't get fixed until we actually upgrade testing infrastructure and start shipping like really large changes to the network. So like, like yes, we should we should wait till we cut this release and like make the the mock post about like the release process and that kind of stuff. But like even then, we're still not going to be like a couple weeks away from fixing the entire thing. Yeah, I, I guess like where my head is at, which might be totally wrong, uh, is kind of like only make buzz around the things that. Ready and and um, for 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 the gateway issues, uh, it would be good to make a little bit more progress to feel a little yep. more confident about it. To then, like communicate. To the community. Yeah, I, I agree. The concern is that if we have three months of delays, uh, then we have to be able to tell people something. Um, and so, like this is this is actually really my concern with not releasing for three months because like we're going to have to tell people things for three months. But yeah. I think we should talk about this in the gateway blog or the release process blog post that this is all in the community's best interest <laughs> that we are doing this such that we don't release regressions and that we make sure that we are hitting our goal of becoming more production ready um, and that that involves investing time up front and that that will pay off significantly over time. And so I think our, our blog post that we do now around how we're improving the, the release process can speak to and allude to what we hope this will improve in the future. Um, and then we can potentially follow that up as well with like, we talked about all of this release process stuff, but what's all the, the testing things and the, the growth we've been seeing and how are we adapting to it? I think the thing we can do for it not to take three months is we can uh, significantly cut down the amount of time it takes to build large-scale testing infra. Um, right now, that's slated to be the largest thing. Um, if we can parallelize that more, we can get more people on it in such a way that it takes less time to build out, then that will significantly decrease the time. That's the biggest blocker. And I think getting more people on it will help spread the knowledge around too, because I think understanding how that infra is going to work is not going to it's sort of tribal knowledge, and it's, it's not going to be good to have it locked up with two or three people. So, I'd like to get my head into that because I'm going to need it also. So, I'll try and help out if I can. Yeah, like perhaps like. Um, People can do a self-assessment uh, rather than trying to get like everything that we know in a doc. Like we can do an experiment where everyone just like checks the priorities for the next two months and like they stack rank it against like this like testing infrastructure thing. And, and if they feel that like hey like actually even what I'm doing uh, would benefit from having a testing infrastructure, then and like that they feel also confident that they can contribute to the testing infrastructure, then it might be a good decision to actually like pause whatever they are doing to help on the testing infrastructure. Um, like another thing is also events. Like if we have like too many events planned for the future months, um, like a participation in an event also something that takes time either from 
preparing content, like following uh, the days there. If, if testing your features at zero to zero, it's like what else can we like slow down or pause or cut to make sure that we, we get this as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, it's just like a, something that keeps helping us every day. Anyway, this is an idea. This is not like, hey, do this. <laughs> this is just me bringing <laughs> the question up <laughs> for everyone to think about. Yeah, it would be cool for it to take much shorter time than that, than what we think. Okay, um, so blockers and asks, if we've got no other blockers and asks, then we're on to questions. Does anyone have any ad lib questions <laughs> that have just popped up in their head that they want to quickly ask? We've got six minutes left. All right. Do you I have a quick question. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, sorry, Molly, go ahead. No, you, you do your thing first and then I'll talk. Uh, my quick question, even if we talk about tests, uh, I would like just to check in how familiar are, is the GoIPFS team on the bet benchmarks.ipfs.team, like the, the work that Neoform did for us in January. Uh, and if you are, I'll update, uh, how useful is that for you? Or is it like useful at all, not useful? Uh, I heard about it briefly, I have never seen it. Uh, I, I seem to remember not being able to get our work into it for some reason, um, yeah. Mm. Is that something you want to explore more, or? Yeah, so like, if you look at the, the, the yeah, list of to-dos, one of them is having some kind of UI for this. Yeah, like we need some kind of web UI for tracking performance over time. I don't know what that ever looked like because I didn't even know it got it was finished, uh, or it even ran at some point. Uh, but yeah, um, so I, I need to see it to actually know if it's if it's what we're looking for. Got it, Alan. Can do it. Can you do a demo for Steven? Alan, go ahead. Go ahead. I I can do it. Um, I can fix it up. I know that it got broken and it has been on my plate to get around to fixing it. Um, uh, and I think Hugo and I are the only people with keys to it. Uh, so it just, it needs to be sorted out, but it, what it was there at one point. Uh, and the only thing that was missing from my point of view was hooking it up to CI so that, um, it ran every time we did a pull request. Um, but we had a bunch of tests, uh, that we defined there. There's a whole table with different kind of scenarios and, and things we've done. It's not like thousands and thousands of nodes testing, but it is, uh, it is doing specific actions, uh, with IPFS and tracking the time it takes to uh, like transfer a file between like JS IPFS and Go IPFS or adding a file to just JS IPFS or just Go IPFS. Um, it's that sort of um, benchmarks uh, and there is space for coding more of your own. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. That's like the, the first, so if you look at the, uh, the um, uh, roadmap, uh, like the, basically the first section is just like get a bunch of those benchmarks running and like track these over time and have like some crappy web UI, I say crappy because I don't want to waste time on it, uh, just like mark progress. It's uh, a, and, a Grafana. Okay. Um, is like, ideally it would also be public so anyone could see this and track it. Yeah. I don't want to hide this stuff behind, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's both of those. Um, all okay. right, I will, I'll get it up and running again as a priority. That is absolutely wonderful. That would save us a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's uh, as nice to all get. Like it, it's a lot of lines and a lot of logs. Um, there's a recording that the Neoform team did, like to show us what they built. Uh, it, like it, it's still as its value. Um, it's a little bit long. It's like an hour. Um, there's some parts you can skip, and maybe okay. while I mean, get it to work again, like you can just watch the recording to get familiar with like how it is set up. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, like, it, it would be good like to grab this work because again, I, I think it's a lot of the, like the, or at least a little bit of the testing gardeners that you want to build at some point, and it's already mm -hmm. somewhat here. 
No, that sounds great. Cool. All right. I'll, I'll try and get it running and then maybe give a presentation or record something so that you guys can watch and, um, and, and understand what's there. And, uh, and yeah, it would be awesome if I could also hook it up to CI as well, because I want it as well. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, it is, do we have any other questions quickly? The thing I was going to bring up was just, um, David's um, spec maintainer PR. Um, I think that could use more visibility. And also, I think there are more people that have mentioned blockers in their personal notes than mentioned blockers in this meeting. Um, if you have blockers that you're going to need people's visibility into, do call them out. But I saw Andrew just had a hand. Yeah, I uh, just opened an issue on Friday, I think, um, but hadn't seen any activity on it. Um, I don't know what the how kind of the level of triage that we're doing, um, but it would be good for like in general, if people are opening issues, just to acknowledge them, even if we can't, we'd like we acknowledge that we don't have the bandwidth to do anything about them. I agree. Is that my fault? Uh, I, I, there's no blame here. <laughs> thing that I noticed. All right. Uh, okay. I, I totally agree. Uh, I try and get to issues as soon as I can, um, but it has been super hectic lately and I've had a bunch of things that I needed to close out and still there are many issues that are in the, my wait list that I still need to get to. So um, yeah, please be patient. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do like, it, it would be just like in the call to, to, to uh, the asks in the blocker section that we've literally just talked about. Um, if people can help in you know, answering issues on JS IPFS or Go IPFS, if they are just problems that people have or questions, um, then that would be super helpful as well. Okay, uh, we are at time, everyone. Uh, it's been lovely to have all your faces in this grid. Uh, and see you again. Um, so I'm going to call this meeting uh, a success and we shall close and finish for today until this same time next week uh, for core implementations. Go and JS IPFS team. <laughs> all right. Bye. Imagine when we have all the links.